Welcome folks. Thanks for joining the session, Protect Your Containerized Applications with Backup for GKE and Anthos. We'll start with looking at history of storage evolution in Kubernetes, get a deep dive into new Kubernetes backup service for GKE workloads. We also have with us Broadcom team who will share their experience using the backup for GKE service. Before we get into details, let's start with a quick round of introductions. My name is Manu Batra. I am product manager with Google Cloud, and I own container native storage and data management services. Aparao, you wanna go ahead and, and introduce yourself? Hi folks, my name is Aparao Chitikela. Currently, I'm working as a SaaS platform delivery engineer at Broadcom. Thanks, uh, Aparao, for the introduction. Now, let's look at the evolution of storage in Kubernetes. We have seen terrific customer adoption of GKE for all types of workloads. This includes stateful workloads like databases that were uncommon in the earlier waves of Kubernetes adoption. With enhancements in Kubernetes storage support, customers are more comfortable deploying data intensive workloads like databases inside containers. The net result is that GK customers are managing far more critical data inside containers than ever before. But many cloud customers are still held back from greater adoption by their service level objectives and backup requirements. Additionally, we have heard from customers in more regulated verticals like finance, payments, manufacturing, and aerospace that have strict data backup and lifecycle management requirements. These customers are often blocked from expanding their use of GKE to include production critical stateful workloads. Our goal is to unblock traditional enterprise customers from running more stateful workloads with more regulated data inside GKE customers and meet their backup and DR service levels. With that objective in mind, we're introducing a new Google service called Backup for GKE. Backup for GKE is an easy cloud native way for customers running workloads on GKE to protect, manage, and restore their containerized applications and data. Now let's get into more details into what really is Backup for GKE and a bit more of an architecture. The service operates at three different layers. The bottommost layer is the data layer where we take a copy of the data. Today, we do support persistent disk, which is uh, Google Cloud's block storage. In future, we'll also be supporting additional types of storage, uh, including file and other elements. So the first part is we take a copy of the data and store it as a part of the backup. Second is, we, as a part of the backup, we also take Kubernetes objects. And this is where a user can define the scope of a backup. A user can define backup to be an entire cluster, a specific namespace within a cluster or a set of namespaces, or a user can define a lot more granular control and scope of backup called applications. And I'll talk more about applications in the following slides. But once the user defines the scope of backup, we pick up all the Kubernetes configurations and objects uh, depending on the scope of the backup. We also, orchestrate backup within an application. And this is to support app consistent backups. A lot of applications are crash consistent, but some applications like to flush their memory or do QSing and unQSing pre and post backup. To be able to accommodate such applications, there, we are, uh, there is a flexibility to create application profiles, which enable user to inject scripts at pod level for QSing or other uh, application level orchestration. So as I touched, backup essentially includes two different elements. One is Kubernetes objects, and second is the volume backup, which is the persistent disk data that we back up as a part of the uh, backup itself. Now, as a part of backup, there are multiple options. As a user, you can choose where the backup is stored, so you can choose, uh, if there are data residency requirements, you can specify which region you want the backups to be stored. You also have ability to select and skip certain resources. If you're managing secrets outside, 
you can tell the backup service to skip and not backup secrets as a part of the backup package. Same thing, you can also decide not to backup volumes if there are other ways you are backing up data or it's more of a transient data that you don't want to back up. Another feature which is very critical to protect against ransomware and malicious deletions is time lock. The service allows you to time lock backups, which will disable any automated or manual deletion of a backup unless the time lock expires. This is really critical feature in case somebody there is a, a ransomware attack or a malicious, somebody tries to delete those backups with a malicious intent. And of course, all data is encrypted by default. Getting more into details about protected application. So I touched upon a user can define the scope of backup. A user can define a cluster as a scope of backup, a set of namespaces, or depending on uh, the scope of backup, a user can define a specific application. And an application can correspond to something like a MySQL or a Redis data uh, or a Postgres database itself. And this allows users to execute QSing and unQSing commands pre and post backup. We also support more complex definitions of application, like an HR data processing application, which could be a combination of a messaging bus, a database, and a web services engine. The system allows you to group all those applications into protected application group, and the, or the backup orchestrates knowing that a particular application is part of a larger component and orchestrates the backup with that knowledge in mind. So essentially, as a part of the backup, you can define a cluster, a namespace, or an application or application group as a scope of the backup. Backups are fun, recoveries are better. This is where the tool provides multiple use cases to restore uh, the data. You can back up a cluster, restore the cluster in the, into a new cluster or into a new region. The system also allows you to back up a cluster and restore a specific namespace on an application. This can be done in case there was an accidental deletion of specific data set, or an upgrade failed and you want to restore the data in its previous healthy state. The system also allows you to clone and uh, scale workloads in different regions. So all these are multiple use cases that, are uh, that can be supported via the backup and the recovery workloads. Getting into a bit more details of restore options. As a part of the restore, the system also allows users to change certain parameters before the backup is restored. This may include changing storage classes or replica counts. An example could be you backup production environment, which was running PD SSDs, but for test and dev, you are using PD standard. So this is where before you restore, you can change storage classes to map to the new environment that you're being, uh, that you are restoring. Another use case is subscope restores, where you can always back up an entire cluster, but at the time of restore, you can decide what is the scope of restore. You may restore only one namespace or a set of namespace or one application out of the entire backup. Another feature uh, that was added to the service is for delegated admin. And this use case is more around when, let's say a cluster backup executes at midnight, but as an app admin, uh, you may want to take a, an ad hoc backup at 4 p.m. just before a critical upgrade is kicking in. So this allows cluster admins to delegate certain authority to application admins uh, to execute an ad hoc backup just before critical upgrades or critical changes that are about to make to an application, namespace, or a cluster. Backup for GKE experience is completely integrated into GKE. So as you log into your GKE framework, you'll be able to see backup and restore in the left uh, navigation. Once you get in there, you'll be able to see all the backup policies, all the clusters that are protected with the backup policies, uh, when was the last backup executed, and what was the duration of the backup. The whole interface also allows you to create new backup plans, restore plans, the intent being it's a completely seamless workflow as you operate your workloads in GKE. Now I'll pass to Aparao to talk more about Broadcom's experience using Backup for GKE service. Aparao. Thanks, Manu. 
so I'm part of Broadcom team. So my team is the SaaS platform. So uh, this saying, this cloud, it shows as the platform. So in the platform, we have different components. Those are infrastructure, monitoring, Kubernetes, networking, identity, and access management. While using this platform, different products teams will deploy their applications. So Broadcom software uses a foundational SaaS platform architecture to manage multiple environments across regions and life cycle stages. The core functional uses Terraform modules to describe the infrastructure, networking, and Kubernetes cluster used to support SaaS products being delivered to the customers. The environment span across development, verify, and production and spread across multiple regions. By using flexible modules, we can create clusters to various sizes while maintaining consistency across environments. Yeah, this is, uh, you will give you more details about uh, host projects and shared VPC. All our service projects are connected with the shared VPC project and will communicate each other applications. So this SaaS platform foundation takes advantage of a cross project communication using Google's shared VPC. This enable separation between the GKE projects and product specific projects or project for DB servers that have not yet been migrated to GKE. Yeah, this is slide uh, talk about uh, state of stateful applications. So as with most of enterprise companies, we started our Kubernetes journey with deploying stateless applications. This helped us take advantage of the GKE scale and cost optimization. Moving to GKE, GKE improved our development velocity besides helping with optimizing cost. But the split architecture created some additional challenges as our application components were split between VMs and containers. Because they are stateful applications, it takes a lot of additional data management services in the platform to trust it with data, especially databases. Moderating applications during the migration by moving the operator's based versions allows us to add operational flexibility. We had stateful applications on VMs and stateless applications on GKE creating application complexity. In order to simplify the operational environment, we started exploring moving stateful applications to GKE as well. So we'll continue. So uh, this uh, stateful applications. Today we have about 150 stateful workloads deployed in GKE. This helped us streamline operations and remove a lot of functional causes by non-uniform environment. But a few challenges remain likely ability to achieve backup and disaster recovery service level. We moved some workloads to GKE, but with very fragment backup solutions. The fragment backup solutions made it made difficult to maintain consistency and created operational challenges. Key requirements for critical stateful applications. Some of the use cases that we'll have for key stateful workloads are ability to do achieve critical backup and disaster recovery service levels, ability to recover an application to known healthy state in the event of fault corruption, fault or corruption. Other use cases include ability to quickly scale and migrate applications. Backup for GKE provides us with an integrated backup and recovery platform to achieve these critical use cases enabling us to migrate additional workloads to GKE. Key highlights from GKE backup. We were particularly impressed with simplicity of taking cluster backups and ability to implement standard backup policies across our enterprise workloads. Backup for GKE also supports application consistent backups besides crash consistent backup. This enables us to break any soils of backups across our organization. Ability to take incremental backup helps 
as optimized cost without compromising critical service levels. So our experience on back of our GKE service after good introduced us to their new offering back of our GKE, it unblock a lot of critical stateful workloads to move GKE. Before backup for we are using storage backup directly, it made very difficult to adhere to service level projects. We are using backup for GKE service and will integrate it part of our core platform services. This will enable us to standardize our backup and disaster recovery policies for the entire Kubernetes application fleet. Thanks. So I'll hand it back to you, Manu, to continue the session. Aparal, thank you so much for walking through the use case and how uh, Broadcom is leveraging backup for GKE to unlock additional stateful workloads uh, and deploy them on GKE. Uh, to recap, folks, backup for GKE is an easy cloud native way for customers running workloads on GKE to protect, manage, and restore their containerized applications and data. Please reach out to your Google Cloud contact to get more information on backup for GKE. And uh, please let us know if there are any other details we can provide. Thank you again so much for uh, taking time to look at our session today, and we'd love to get your feedback. Thank you all.